situation. So we put it through the confirm button uh, and we land here on custom light box. So this is custom, you can have this image look for a bit like. We have uh, the download option to download the incentive, usually an MP3. And you've also got the option to share your actions on social networks. So what does the sharing actually look like? Here we go, this is the Twitter share. Uh, you've got the option of having a preset share message. We've got a lot of control over that. You can include a link back to the promotion, which you can actually be wishing to do. Um, you can include your own username, you can put in any hashtags that are relevant to the promotion. And on Facebook, it's pretty much the same story, except you have a little bit more leeway because you're able to include an image. Uh, and you can also, your text message can be longer than 140 characters. Um, again, you're going to link that back, back to the promotion. Or with Facebook, you can actually load the data capture widget right there in the stream, so there's no need for the fan to actually leave the cozy confines of Facebook. Okay, now the magic part. All of the sharing is tracked, so you're going to a social network. Uh, you've got information on how many of their friends have been clicked on the widget, and that gives you a click share ratio. So the click share ratio for this widget is 2.5. And what that means is that for every person who shared the widget, two and a half more people have clicked on it, which is, which is good. You know, that, that's a good number. The idea here is that you're able to measure and optimize your campaigns. Uh, and it, it gives you the opportunity to try and vary your incentives um, and measure how the conversions work out. <coughs> this is especially useful um, for testing out different channels. So you might want to have uh, one widget sitting on Facebook, one's going to be on your website, you might send one out to a music blog, and you can test them against each other and see where your fans are actually coming from. Okay, so back to the flow. After you have downloaded and shared, um, close the light box, and in this case, uh, we land on the bank's Facebook page. Now, with this process, you can set any page at all as the landing page. So it could be your store, it could be your website, uh, it could be a social profile. And it's a, it's a great extra opportunity to influence that next step that the fan takes. So these widgets uh, can be customized for any website. Um, here's some examples of different looking ones. This is a bleach widget created by somebody in this room. Um, this is a landing page for all programs. So that's the whole page taken up with the data capture. And a few more options here. Just to show you how flexible the tool is. Okay, so I guess what I want to uh, emphasize here, with, with taking such a detailed look at this process, it's not a silver bullet for getting you 500 fans a week. You know, it's not, it's not going to do that for you. But if you use a process like this, you're ensuring that you've got the role for us of database building going on. And you're going to have those four key elements looked after. You're going to have your double opt-in, customized to your brand, offering an exchange of value for that email address, and all set up for sharing. All right, so the next step. Oh, hang on, questions. Hi. Hi, um, I wondered what you thought of Topspin versus Bandcamp with the other experience of that. Because I have actually tried to set up Topspin and I was a bit overwhelmed with um, all the stuff that's on there. So. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, that's a good question. Um, that's actually something I'm going to look at very briefly and shortly, but not really in a lot of detail. So let's talk about it now. Um, there's a hell of a lot of choice and have in Topspin in two options. <coughs> I mean, uh, hang on, I'm trying to figure out how to frame this. Do you want me to talk about what the differences are, or how... Okay. Yeah, and um, whether you pay monthly for them, or whether they're free services as well. Okay. Uh, let's see. It's, I'm actually not that familiar with the Bandcamp workings. Probably there are people in here who are, though, so you can please jump me down if I'm wrong here. But what I understand of Bandcamp is that you don't pay for it, you just pay a commission on sales. Is that right? Yeah. Cool. Okay, so you're not paying for Bandcamp. Um, and it's a, it's a very flexible and great service, and I would recommend it. The difference with Topspin um, is that it kind of... Topspin's in a slightly different league in that it is maybe better suited in its, in its full form, which, you know, it has a lot of features built into it. So this data capture feature, that's just one thing. And even if I was running a Bandcamp campaign, 
I would probably still use Tosman's data capture because it has all the bells and whistles that I think are important. But when you're looking at running a pre-sale or um, using other features, uh, Topspin has a lot more punch, so it's got, it's got a lot more muscle behind it. So you, you're going to pay a little more, but you're going to have much more features at your disposal. So getting into a full comparison is a, is a little beyond the scope of, of what I can get into right now, but hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea. Yeah. Thank you very much. Does anybody else want to discuss? the data capture process or anything else coming to their mind that might be on top of it. Okay, cool. All right, let me move into uh, the pre-sale. How do I create a pre-sale? Now, as this lady has just mentioned, there is a lot of choice on the market. Um, these are a few of the big players. Each of them has their strengths and their sort of niche that they're going to be best for. If you are finding yourself in a position where you have no idea which one's right for you or uh, what it actually means, then I would be happy to speak with you about what they do offer um, after this talk is done. So let's just have a look at what um, your average kind of standard pre-sale actually looks like. Okay, hopefully uh, you can see this okay. I'm going to highlight some of the elements which hopefully will help you. But this is a simple offer page for an artist called Little Boots. She put out an album called Nocturnes earlier this year. Um, and this is a great example of the three elements that I want to highlight to you in terms of what a pre-sale should look like. Front and centre, we have the offers. Okay, so this features four offers. You've got the vinyl plus t-shirt, um, sorry, vinyl on its own or vinyl plus t-shirt, and then you've got the CD on its own or the CD plus t-shirt. So you can't really miss those when you come to the page. They're kind of slap you in the face. Um, up in the top left, we have some page shares. So these are options for your fans to share the page onto Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. Um, and again, this, this may seem a little easier to use that, but um, you know, your fans are your fans. They want to they show that they're fans. It's such a huge part of being a music fan is about telling other people that you're a music fan. You know, it's part of your identity, the music that you're into. So people are often very keen to, to be able to be the first to share it or to let others know to be the one to tell. Don't underestimate the share if you were considering underestimating it. Uh, down the bottom, beneath the office here, we have uh, a data capture. And I kind of consider this to be an extension of the office. It's a free offer. Essentially, there are going to be people who come to this page who aren't quite ready to part with their cash to share for you. But they are, hopefully, going to be willing to part with their email address. So if you include this on the data capture page, then you know, there's going to be people who don't want to spend, but hopefully they'll give you a try grab a free track, and then you're able to isolate all of those people on your list that have got onto your list through this campaign, and then you can ta uh, tailor your message to them to, to try and entice them to, to pile some money on whatever you like. Okay, so here's another example from the veils. We have the offers in the middle, dropping off the page. Uh, we have our share links at the top left here, and down below the offers we have a data catcher. You can see a bit of a pattern of emerging here. Third example, this is an artist called Paul Kalkbrenner who I work with. Uh, at the top we have the share links. In the center here we have a data capture, slightly different layout here. And down below, possibly extremely hard to see on the screen, is uh, the office. So we've got the four offers right there where you can't really miss them. So just to recap, in case I haven't made it awfully clear, um, you've got your offers, you've got your data capture, and you've got some options to share. So let's get a little bit deeper into what these offers are going to look like. Now your album is pretty likely going to be available uh, through TuneCore, uh, maybe on iTunes, at Amazon, maybe even at h &B or whatever record store is still standing. So when you are selling it through your own website, through your own, um, through your own domain, you really want to make it interesting, give people a reason to kind of part with their cash. So it's going to be a combination of uh, digital, physical, and limited items, maybe a box set. <coughs> Excuse me. So some examples of, of limited of, of ideas, limited products that you might want to include could be a numbered Polaroid, or maybe you want to go down the road with a personalized phone call. It's up to you. Okay, so into some, um, some data here. 
This is a look at sales by quantity and those same sales in terms of revenue. So when I say quantity, I mean the number of sales. So this could represent, say, 500 sales that came through for this artist. Um, and when we look at it in terms of revenue, we're looking at the value of those sales. So how much were those 500 sales worth in terms of cash? Now, the blue section are offers that included a physical item. And the red section are offers that were digital only. So what we can see here on the left is that in terms of quantity, you had around, uh, this artist had around three quarters of their orders um, were for offers that included a physical item. And only about a quarter were for the digital only offer. But when we look at that in terms of value, it's kind of half, uh, it halves. You've only got 12% of your revenue coming through those digital only offers. So what we see from this is physical is, is worth more and it's, it's, more, uh, it's more popular. Um, as streaming becomes much more common, uh, your fans are a lot less likely to buy those digital only. Hello? Sorry, sorry. Um, sorry. sorry to cut you in mid flow, no worries. but is that data for that individual only or is that data used, can be used across the board? You mean the specific data? Yeah, that specific data. The specific data that I've um, collated for this slide is coming from one artist. But what I've done here, if it, if it kind of hammers at home a little further, is I had a slide for this which was old. It had data from 2009 to 2011, I think. And the story that that data told was, oh, I stand in front of this, it's going to mess up. Well, if you can imagine this, on the quantity side, we had, it was half and half. So in terms of quantity, about half People, about half the people were buying digital only, about half were buying physical. And this was aggregated, this data, the old data. <laughs> Crazy story. Uh, but when we looked at revenue, uh, it, was, it was more like this picture. It was still a significant reduction in terms of value. But when I put together this data, which is more recent, it's from a, a pre-sale that occurred late last year, and it was bigger than 500 dollars, I should say, so it is more representative. Um, what I'm finding here is that, you know, that relationship is even more so now with digital only products being a lot less popular. Is that cool? Hopefully that made sense for everybody. Okay. Alright, so yeah, my, my theory here is that streaming becomes more common, fans don't really need to buy your album, but where they are a fan and they want to spend their money on you, they want to actually get something cool. You know, they want a cool t-shirt, they want it on vinyl. This is what this is what this is, you know, this is the trends of retail nowadays. And I guess what I would always encourage is that you actually just bundle your digital, not to devalue digital, we all know it's not got a lot of value anyway, unfortunately, that's a whole other argument, but you would always bundle your digital together with a physical product so that your fans are going to receive that download the minute your release date hits. No delays with the vinyl, like we saw within the same. Okay, so as a rule of thumb, you want to have at least three offers, I would normally have a few more than that, but at least three and you want to have one less than 10 pounds, one between 10 and 30, and one more than 30. And this is not hard and fast, this is just a rule of, rule of thumb. And the reason I say this is you want to avoid leaving money on the table. Recently I purchased from a big name artist who was running a pre-sale, and his top offer was a 99 pound limited box set. Now I was a little slow off the mark, and by the time I got to this pre-sale, this limited edition box had all sold out. So I, I, you know, I, I was kind of leaning toward it, but I couldn't, it was finished, it was gone, there was no, no, more, no more to be had. So I looked down to what the next offer was, and was pretty horrified to find that the next offer down 